So basically I was like, mom, I don't need to go to college. I can sew, I'll be fine. Okay, so a little bit of history. Soon after I graduated high school, I was working at Joann's and I had already decided that I didn't want to go to college and follow a more traditional career path, but I wasn't sure what I actually did want to do. So I opened an Etsy shop and started making baby clothes because it was literally the first thing I thought of. My basic generic baby clothes were only selling at a rate of like one dress per month until I discovered Spoonflower. It's worth noting that at this point, I knew nothing of graphic design and was purely using Spoonflower as a buyer. Even though custom printed fabric is incredibly expensive, I figured that with baby clothes, I would only be using small amounts for each piece, so it might be worthwhile. And it was. I think Spoonflower designs tend to be on the cutting edge, purely because of how quickly a designer can notice a trend and then create a print, unlike the production time required for traditional fabric store prints. The amazing thing about Spoonflower is how you can take any kind of art, digital, watercolor, anything, and print it to a usable fabric medium that can be sewn into anything you want. And this gave my baby clothes the unique factor I needed to make them sell, and it's where I found a niche. From there, I quickly branched out. I made very simple, quick women's skirts, dresses, purses, and things like that. On larger items, instead of making an entire garment from the Spoonflower fabric, I strategically designed them to be constructed mostly from affordable fabric and only used the custom stuff for pops of detail. At this point, I started to come up with new ideas and I began to realize the potential custom fabric had. That's when I decided to sign up for some classes at my community college, and over the next several years, I ended up taking both graphic design classes they offered, plus photography, drawing, an entrepreneurship class, like a business law class, and oh, stage combat, rapier and dagger edition. <laughs> I started designing my own custom fabrics, specifically designing them to fit the patterns that I used, rather than as full repeating prints. And my business strategy continued to evolve over the course of several years. I started selling even just the fabric prints through Etsy, or kits of printed fabric, as I wanted to pull back from purely sewing for profit. Because do you have any idea how boring it is to sew the exact same dress a hundred times? I do. Now, I do want to be clear and mitigate expectations if you're thinking of a similar career path. My Etsy shop has formed the backbone of my income, but it is not enough alone. I consistently work four or five simultaneous gigs just to keep my bills paid. I have nannied for the past six years, I've taught sewing lessons since I was like 18, and my dad runs a leather and vinyl repair business to which I am subcontracted to do upholstery work, recovering mostly booth seats and boat seats, which I've technically been doing since I was about 13. I also sell fabric through Spoonflower, and now I have YouTube. For the last few years, I've let the Etsy shop take a back seat, focusing my energy on building my channel instead. And that's why I'm not going to link my Etsy shop or use this video to promote it in any way. I want to reach the point where I can shut it down entirely, and that's mainly because I have issues with the way Etsy runs as a company and the way they treat their sellers, especially when it comes to the seller's finances. If you are considering a similar career path, my highest recommendation is to start your own e-commerce website. Sell through Etsy too in order to draw people back to your main website, but don't put all of your eggs in the Etsy basket. In all of this, that is probably my only regret, not starting my own website and instead becoming too heavily dependent on Etsy. My goal with this video is mostly to talk about the companies I've used to print fabric. It's not so much about how to design fabric, because pff, that's a large topic. It's actually infinite, as infinite as any art form. And frankly, there are already a lot of videos out there about how to create repeats and seamless patterns and such, and a lot of it just takes practice to do well. If you want to learn, it is out there. But it's also a mysterious topic to a lot of people, so I figured we'd at least cover the basics. I want to divide the art into three main categories. The first category, one that most people will be familiar with, is pixel-based computer art. This can range from something as simple as Microsoft Paint to Adobe Photoshop. Pixel art does have the advantage of texture. You can create an incredible range of art with pixel programs. But I have never really been drawn to Photoshop and my knowledge of it is very basic. My area of expertise is the second category, vector art. Vector art is point-based, as in points on a graph that can be moved or filled or outlined however you want. The draw for me with vector is how incredibly geometric and precise it is. It definitely enables my perfectionistic tendencies, but it produces such beautiful, crisp, clean lines, and it makes it super easy to change the color schemes of a design. The art can be exported to whatever dimensions you want, so blurred, pixelated designs will never be a problem. And the third category is real art. 
Sorry, that's gonna make somebody real mad. <laughs> I mean, acrylics or watercolors or oils or charcoals or markers or any other art form that produces a real tangible, you know, one-off piece of art. The third category of fabric design is digitizing those by scanning them into a computer, such as I did with this dress. I find this works best in tandem with a basic understanding of Photoshop. Either you can create icons, little separate pictures that do not touch and can be scattered across a field to create a repeat, or the more difficult way is to produce a repeat on paper and then use Photoshop to smooth over the edges. If you are already an artist and want to learn about fabric design, I would recommend this method for starting out. Just now, I mentioned the two primary ways I create a seamless repeat. Either you have separate icons or you have a full interwoven design. I have two methods to make these into repeats on Illustrator. Icons are the easiest. With this carnation print, I used one carnation and then flipped it and reversed it and spread the icons out using the pattern tool. This essentially creates the repeat for you, and as long as you size the artboard to the same dimensions as the pattern you make, the repeat should export seamlessly. The other method is harder, and I use it for large, complex interwoven designs such as this chintz vine. Basically, it involves using the knife tool to cut my design in half, then move one half over, and then fill in the gaps between them. I do this vertically and then horizontally. Once my vector art is exported, before uploading it to print, I always check the repeat on Photoshop. There is a tool under Filter and then Offset. You can use it to wrap your design and check that the overlap exported seamlessly. Sometimes it doesn't, and I'll see a thin white line. This is frustrating because it's often so fine that you can't even see it when you upload it, and you don't realize it's there until after you get the fabric in the mail. And you still might not even see it then if you only ordered a small sample and your repeat is larger than the sample size. So I always check. And it's the type of thing that's pretty simple to correct in Photoshop if there is a problem. And then I upload it. I always export my designs to PNG files. I don't have a reasoning, it's just what I use, but I always export fabric designs to 300 DPI. DPI, dots per inch, PPI, pixels per inch or points per inch, it's all the same thing. Most fabric companies use a standard of 150 DPI. If you use 300, you'll always have to adjust it when you upload. It might not make any real difference, but I feel like it does. And I like that it can be easily adjusted anywhere between 150 and 300 to upsize the scale. When you upload, Spoonflower does have a couple of different repeat options. I do not use these. I find it always better to refine my repeat before uploading it when you can zoom into infinity. But other than that, yeah. Now, for the first few years I printed through Spoonflower exclusively. I didn't know other companies existed, and it wasn't until 2017 that I started researching to see what else was out there, and I ended up ordering samples from several different companies. I'm sure there are similar companies out there that predate Spoonflower, but two innovations set Spoonflower apart. The small-scale printing and the public marketplace. I think most of these companies were catering to fashion designers who wanted their own custom prints but needed like 50 bolts of each. Spoonflower was the first that I know of to say, here are thousands of highly specific designs, print any amount you want on knit, woven, poly, cotton, whatever. No fabric store would ever be able to justify stocking some of these super niche prints, but this way nobody has to stock it. It will never go on clearance and go to waste because it's only ever printed in the exact quantity a customer wants. However, However, in the wake of Spoonflower success, there have been many, many, many small companies that have risen up to compete. And they're all just a little bit different. They offer different fabric types, they have different color profiles, there are even differing price points and levels of quality. And the company I settled on at that time was Fabric On Demand. I switched and started printing the majority of my fabric through them. And I worked with them for about a year before I started looking around again. Even though I liked their fabric quality better than Spoonflower, I just couldn't justify the jump in price. And their colors printed just a little bit weird, like, oversaturated. And then the next company that I landed on, which is still my current favorite, is called My Fabric Designs. They have introduced a public marketplace like Spoonflower, but they are still a small company and the design library is limited. They offer a few different fabrics that I absolutely love. They are just beautiful, gorgeous fabrics. My favorites are the premium cotton, the organic cotton sateen, and the linen cotton blend. However, there are others. There is a company called Design Your Fabric, which I've never bought more than samples from, but I keep them on my radar because they have the best array of natural fibers, specifically silks, that I've ever seen. Another company called 
called Decor Print was recommended by a subscriber in the comments. <laughs> I'm interested in experimenting with it because they have 100% linen that is much cheaper than spoon flowers. Basically, it's gotten to the point that if you just Google custom printed fabric or custom print fabric on demand, fabric on demand, you'll find a whole litany of small companies. It really just depends on what you need. But for beginners, spoon flower is fine. <laughs> okay, so I've never actually like counted up how much of my business expenses are purely custom printed fabric. And then I was talking with my friend Anna about it and I was like surely it's over 10 grand it's gotta be and she's like no and I'm like I'm pretty sure and then I did it <laughs> holy schmackerel Next, I want to compare Spoonflower and MFD more specifically, as they are the companies I've purchased the most from and the two that I most highly recommend. Spoonflower has by far the most user-friendly website, both as a designer and as a buyer. It's just the easiest to understand what's going on and what everything means. MFD's website isn't that much harder to understand, but it's slow. It is like, it's so slow and it's glitchy. I'm constantly shocked by how long it takes to navigate from one page to another. And sometimes things don't upload right. And once recently I placed an order that just didn't go through. I waited like three weeks, four weeks, and then I checked my bank statement and it was there, but it never showed up in my orders on the website. <laughs> However, anytime that I've had a problem with MFD, they have always been super quick to correct it. And that leads me to customer service, which goes to MFD. Not that Spoonflowers is bad, but MFD is a small company. When I email a question about my order, they'll be like, oh, I just saw that fabric go through. I really liked the art. You just get a different vibe when it's a smaller company with fewer employees who all have a greater hand in the work. Spoonflower is a larger company, and if you email them, you're going to get a customer service person who's going to have to look you up. It's not a big difference, but... For printing time, I currently have to recommend Spoonflower. They used to be about even, about two weeks, and maybe less if it's just a small sample. But over COVID and 2020, MFD seems to be struggling to keep up. The printing times have varied wildly, and I'm now planning my orders at least a month in advance. This may change in the future, but for now, that is something to be aware of. For their fabrics offered, they have mostly the same options, and each has a few that the other does not. It really depends on what you're looking for. However, I have to choose MFD for this category because because comparing the same fabrics against each other, I just love the hand of the MFD fabric so much more. And it's what I gravitate towards when buying fabric, especially for any personal project. For their public marketplace, Spoonflower is going to win. They've just got the history and the name recognition and their library is massive endless. MFD just doesn't have the same amount. They are less likely to have what you want and be worth buying from, unless you're uploading your own designs or if you have a particular favorite designer. Now, if you are a seller, it's also going to be Spoonflower because they have the market mostly cornered. However, it's definitely not a bad thing to have shops on multiple platforms and then cross promote your designs that way. The pricing of their fabrics is very similar. Spoonflower does not have sales very often and they're usually pretty specific. But if you're a designer, they do have a steady designer discount of 10%. There is also a bulk discount starting at 20 yards of fabric, which won't be helpful for very many people, but hey, I used to need it. You also receive a 10% commission from any of your designs that other people buy. MFD is both simpler and more complex. Quirky, let's say. They have sales even less often than Spoonflower, but they almost always have a coupon. You can get them through email, Instagram, or Facebook. They typically range at 10% or 15%, though I've seen 20% pretty frequently, and it's gone as high as 30% on Black Friday. In a way, this is much better than Spoonflower's designer discount because the same level of discount, or higher, is open to everybody, not just designers. MFD does not offer a bulk discount. They do offer a 15% sales commission compared to Spoonflower's 10%, and they don't say that they have a designer discount, but they kind of do. Every time I put through a big order, I notice a comparable bump in my credits. I think they count my own orders as sales commissions, so I kind of get a 15% discount, but in the form of a rebate. It works for me, whatever. I don't, I mean, hey, money. <laughs> Overall, I have to give the pricing and sales and discounts category to MFD. Okay, this is interesting. When you publish a design to Spoonflower, you have to order and proof a sample before you can sell it. This does get to be a lot when you're publishing multiple sizes and colorways of the same design, but they do have an option to order a bunch of samples at once for a discount. With MFD, you don't have to order a sample. None. You can just publish it. This is good and bad. As a seller, it makes things easier and leaves things up to my judgment. If I tweak a color, I can just upload it and go, knowing that it's right. However, as a buyer of other people's designs, it makes me a tad wary. 
Like, I trust my own judgment more than other people's. However, for my purposes, I'm gonna have to pick MFD because I like not having to buy a sample if I don't think I need to. Spoonflower does have the fill a yard option, which is great, especially for quilters and other people doing small scale projects who want to get the price of a full yard, but get multiple different designs on that yard. MFD has nothing comparable. However, MFD has something that I love. On Spoonflower, the designer sets the DPI and sizes the fabric how they want before publishing. On MFD, you do that, but then the buyer can edit the DPI for themselves. This is fantastic, because that means the buyer can tweak the scale of the print however they want, customizing it perfectly, and the designer only has to upload one size. Spoonflower, get with it. Sampling does have to go to Spoonflower. They offer samples of any fabric for a flat rate, $5. MFD doesn't even offer samples of every fabric type. Some of it does, and some of it it only offers full yardage of. Like, my beloved cotton sateen only offers full yards. For the chintz vine dress, I only needed two yards, so I just bought it. It was fine, but it definitely printed differently than it showed on screen. Like, it's fine, it's a beautiful dress, but as a control freak designing every detail of a project, it irks me. <laughs> the color profiles are about even. Some print better or worse depending on what fabric medium you choose. I particularly love MFD's premium cotton colors. I just mentioned my problems with their cotton sateen. Spoonflower I tend to feel pretty neutral towards, but the color profiles do shift depending on micro variances in the ink and the fabric. So it's not a perfect science and you should always buy a sample in the exact fabric you intend to use. Unless you're buying from MFD and they don't have samples available in the fabric you want. In that case, it's an expensive crapshoot. And black. Printing black. <laughs> black. Black fabric has always been a struggle for Spoonflower, especially cotton. It was really frustrating because you would always upload something in black and it would come back as gray. <laughs> when I first printed black to MFD's premium cotton, I was like dancing with joy at the inky blackness of the cotton. Now I will say it's been several years since I bought anything black from Spoonflower because why would I? So they may be better by now, I'm not gonna bother checking. I'm happy with MFD. So the split is pretty even. It really depends on who you are and what you want. Are you a professional or buying casually? And what's your skill level? I would say in summary that Spoonflower is probably the best bet if you're just getting started. But if you've used fabric printing before and want to explore more options, maybe try out my fabric designs. In spite of my frustrations with MFD, which are primarily technical, they're still the company that I buy at least 80% of my fabric from at this point. And I think it just comes down to texture. The fabric feels so lovely. It doesn't feel like custom printed fabric, if you know what I mean. However, if you're interested in learning more, the best thing you can do is order a sample pack from each so that you can see the color variances and feel the texture for yourself. Okay, when I took questions for this video, a lot of people asked if custom printed fabric was worth the cost. That depends. Nobody needs custom printed fabric. It is booty expensive and absolutely a luxury. In fact, if you're just learning to sew, I really recommend that you don't buy custom fabric. The stuff at the store is fine, and frankly, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And the only thing worse than feeling like you've wasted your time on a failed project is feeling like you wasted time and money. Just to clarify, time is never wasted on a failure. You always learn from it. But that doesn't make it hurt less. I buy custom printed fabric because at this point sewing for me is really an art project. I design a piece and because I know how to create fabric, I do. It all becomes part of the piece, designed and finished to fit my imagination. I like doing a lot of historically inspired stuff and that fabric is much harder to find. So Steen is one of my favorite historical costumers on YouTube. She is a digital embroidery artist. She embroiders the crap out of everything, just because she can and she loves doing it and she's good at it. I feel that way about fabric printing. I do it because I love it and it adds more of myself to each project. But nobody under any circumstances should feel pressured to buy custom fabric. Because fabric printing is art to me, but also a business, I've had the luxury to indulge in experiments and trials and samples and color matrices and more. I have spent a lot of business money on learning more about fabric printing and what to expect. And even then it's not perfect. I think this is very important to understand. Fabric printing is not an exact science and it requires a bit of flexibility. The more money you have to spend on sampling, the closer you'll get. But there are quirks. For example, lint. 
One of my upcoming projects will involve this MFD linen cotton blend. When I pre-washed it, little specks of lint that had been clinging to the fabric during printing lifted, revealing a light freckling of white dots. I do not have a problem with this. It doesn't bother me. I think it adds character, and I understand that it's just part of the process. Unavoidable. That's why I'm saying that fabric printing requires something of a flexible mindset. If there is a serious flaw with the fabric, I have never ever had trouble getting a reprint. But for little quirks, if it's going to bother you, maybe you shouldn't custom print fabric. Okay, time for the Q&A. Can you get a fabric that you currently have printed or do you have to choose from what's available? Okay, I can read this two ways. One is, can you get a fabric design recreated? I think technically no because of copyright, but like, I'm not a huge stickler for copyright when it comes to personal use. Like if you have a favorite dress or something that you want to try cloning, I do not see anything wrong with that. However, the question might mean, can you print to a bolt of fabric that you already own? There are companies that do that. I've definitely seen it on websites before. I can't find any right now and things might've changed, but if that's something you're interested in, you can always just email around and ask. However, I think it would depend on the quantity you need and the type of fabric you want to print to. Because not all fibers can be printed to equally, there is pigmentation printing and sublimation printing and rayon in particular seems to be difficult because I rarely see any companies that offer for any type of rayon. And then there's quantity. The only time I for sure remember seeing it offered, it did require a substantial minimum order. It's not like you could just send them a yard of fabric and have it printed too. Is it possible to DIY fabric printing at home without the need for complex machinery? Um, okay, not cheap and not good. There is a type of cotton I saw once that was meant to go through a regular computer printer. And nowadays there are crickets and things like that that print to t-shirts. So it depends on what you want to do and what you need it for. But in general, companies like Spoonflower do use incredibly complex machinery, and you just aren't going to be able to reproduce anything close from home. Would you ever consider starting your own fabric line slash store? Yes. <laughs> Okay, this question is about scale. I think the answer to a lot of questions is going to be the same. You have to buy samples. If it's a large print, maybe even consider getting a fat quarter instead of an eight by eight sample so that you can see more of it. If you're looking at doing any large project and investing real money into a length of fabric, Please, please buy a sample. <laughs> what kinds of programs do you use slash recommend to design custom fabrics? I recommend anything vector because I like vector. I am very uncomfortable with pixels, but like most people use pixels and it's just fine for them. So whatever you're comfortable with. Do you copy historic fabrics or make your own designs? I have done both, but for now I am deep in the history bounding obsession. So I'm focusing on recreating historical prints. It's sort of a gap in the historical costuming market I can see. Nowadays you have pattern companies and shoemakers and jewelry companies and embroidery artists and natural fiber fabrics, but I see very few historical fabric prints available. And those that I do see are focused on trying to achieve perfect historical accuracy. And I'm really more about the historical inspiration, but mixed with modern colors and lots of options for a range of history boundaries. I've already mentioned a few times my frustration with the endless white floral prints. Does Spoonflower or whatever own your design once it's listed for sale? Can buyers use the fabric printed with it however they want, same as if they bought it from a fabric shop? Or can the design only be used for personal use? Okay, it is still your design. You have rights to it, you can delete it whatever, it is yours. Spoonflower does have the right to use it in their promotional materials and marketing, but they almost always credit the shop the art came from. So if people like it, they can find it and buy it. Mutually beneficial. Now I believe buyers can use the fabric however they want and make things to sell exactly the same as Joanne's. I mean, that's what I've, <laughs> I mean, I've done that. I think that that's a gray area of copyright though. If somebody wants to control the design, they probably should just keep it private. If you publish it, how are you even going to track down people using it and reselling it? It just seems like a really self-defeating move. People have used my designs for resale and I've always promoted them. All it does is draw more people back to me. Where do you as a designer find good fabric pattern inspirations? Any good historical sources? Okay, yes, museums are the best. They have images of dresses and historical textile samples and a lot of the time they'll even spread out the skirt and give a good full view of the design. These are the easiest to work from, but I'm pretty decent at extrapolating out partial patterns and then making something up to fill in the gaps. If you're copying historical garment prints, are there any copyright issues? Okay, all of that fabric is public domain. However, the images on the museum website might not be. So you can recreate anything you want, but you might not be able to share more than a 
link to where you sourced it. Of course, if you're visiting a museum and taking your own photos, then those are yours. Anybody can recreate a public domain print. I own the rights to my recreations, but anybody else can go to the exact same source and recreate the exact same fabric as long as they do the work. That's the positive and negative when you're working from existing public domain inspirations. You don't own the original or have exclusive rights to reproduce it. Which type of archive is best for printing patterns? PDF, TIFF, which one do you use? Okay, I always use PNG. I used to use TIFF or JPEG, but I switched to PNG a long time ago. I don't see much difference, but I like PNG. I will say, I think Spoonflower removed it, but there used to be the option to upload directly from the AI format. <laughs> that was garbage. It would just like randomly not upload a layer. Chunks of your design would just be gone. And sometimes they were too small to even see until you got the print in. It's a good thing they got rid of that. I wouldn't recommend using AI format, even if you find a company that still accepts it. How well do custom fabrics wash dry iron? Thanks in advance. First, pretty much all of the websites have a care instruction section somewhere in each fabric. I tend to get in my fabric and wash and dry it on hot once before using it. I find that custom fabrics tend to already be pre-shrunk, which happens as part of the printing and steaming process. So there is little, if any, additional shrinkage, but I want to get it out of the way. And I want to like test and make sure that the fabric color is gonna stay right. The websites tend to recommend washing cool, line dry, iron on the backside. I usually ignore that and I've yet to have a problem. <laughs> However, here's just something about fabric in general that you should know. All fabric fades over time. Red dyes fade the worst. It's just a fact. It's usually so slight that you don't even notice unless you happen to work at a fabric store and there's this one like really ugly red print on the top shelf that hasn't been touched since inventory. And then when you finally do take it down and unroll it, there's like an orange streak down the side. In general though, the longer dye is exposed to the sun and the more frequently it's washed, the faster it will fade. I've never noticed any fading in the clothes I make for myself, but I keep them clean and wear under layers to minimize washing frequency. But really, it's, it's not really been an issue for me. I haven't had any problems with color fade how do you get the highest quality prints on fabric? Okay, you really just have to understand DPI and you have to make sure that whatever you upload is high enough resolution that you aren't trying to blow anything up. That is not going to work out for you. I've been warned that the fabric quality from Spoonflower is inferior to printed quilting cotton I would buy from Moda, Trendex, Kona, or other major contemporary brands. Would you agree with this assessment and what is the case today? Okay, Spoonflower used to carry a basic cotton and then an actual Kona brand cotton. They discontinued the Kona and right now they just have what they call petal cotton starting at 1850 per yard for 42 inches wide. I do not love petal cotton. The colors are okay, but the fabric just doesn't feel that substantial. It doesn't feel like quilting cotton. Now MFD has a basic combed cotton that starts at 1750 per yard at 54 inches wide. Its quality I would say is roughly equivalent to Spoonflower's petal cotton, even if the price is better. But MFD has a premium cotton that is $18 a yard and 54 inches wide. This is my favorite and at only a 50 cent price jump, it is well worth it in quality. It just feels really substantial to me. However, fabric is very subjective and I like the premium cotton because I like dense, strong feeling fabrics, but it's not as soft as Kona cotton would be. So it's the kind of thing that if you're interested in, I would recommend buying a sample. <laughs> and I do think we need to get the word out to more Spoonflower designers to open secondary shops on MFD. They already proofed their designs through buying Spoonflower samples. So it would literally cost them nothing to upload a few designs to MFD. I have had so many issues with Spoonflower. They don't check that the designs offered on their site will print well at the proposed scale or with this type of colors. I've had blurry prints and awful colors and it's exploding head emoji. <laughs> okay. The way Spoonflower functions, they don't check their designs. They have, I think, 350,000 designs in their marketplace right now. The website is set up so that the designers are the ones ordering samples and checking their own work. Sometimes it's a flexibility issue, especially with the colors. Depending on your fabric choice, they often don't print exactly as you see them on screen. And I think it takes experience and trial and error to know exactly how the colors will print to a certain fabric. For example, with my wine colored chintz vine design, the first time I printed it, it was way too dark. So I brightened it twice, but now I'm concerned that when I print it to the cotton set, it'll be way too light. So again, buying samples before full yardage is key. But the other possible issue, especially with blurry prints, is that the designers might be approving designs that actually aren't good. And if that's happening, I think Spoonflower needs to be notified because the designs aren't shown online in full clarity to prevent copying, but that means that buyers have to rely on a level of trust. And if the designers are violating that trust, I think that's a deeper problem. However, if you have been recently disappointed by a fabric print, I think you should contact Spoonflower or whichever company 
company directly and politely and explain the problem. In most cases, especially if there's any kind of printing error, they're almost always willing to offer a reprint and they should be notified if there's a problem with the design itself. So in summary of my thoughts, I love fabric printing, obviously. I think it has incredible potential and I'm hoping that it opens even more business opportunities for me in the future, as I have now got my first historically inspired fabrics up in my new Spoonflower shop and my MFD shop. Creating the fabric for my projects is something that I really want to intertwine in my channel and in future makes. I just really love the idea of being able to make a project and be like, hey, you can make this exact same project with the exact same fabric if you want, or you can make it in your favorite color. I just love that. I think it's so cool. So that'll be fun. We're going to do more projects. If you want to check out my new shops, they'll be linked below. On Spoonflower, it's just Mariah Patty, and on my fabric designs, it's Mariah Patty, all one word. Currently, I just have the Chin Spine prints published, but I'm waiting on my second round of samples, and soon I'll be getting the Carnation prints up. So see you next time, and if there were any further questions, leave them in the comment section. I will try to answer as many as I can. It's like heavy.